Hello, my name is Paul Charnier. I'm the editorial page editor at The Day newspaper, and I'm joined today by David Collins, a news columnist here at The Day. And we want to talk about the recent accident involving State Senator Andrew Maynard, and in particular, the questions that continue to raise about his uh, competency uh, to serve as a state senator. Uh, this is an issue that The Day has been asking about uh, and following long before the accident. And if you could talk a little about that, David, uh, uh, our efforts to, to get interviews and to talk with the senator about issues in Hartford. Yeah, I think the, the issue until this accident, um, uh, for me certainly, was that um, he hasn't presented himself in any way for interviews or in any sort of um, meaningful way to his constituents. Um, and to have spent a whole session uh, in the General Assembly voting and, and making public policy and then not explaining it and making himself available um, seemed to me a disconnect. If you can do one, you should be able to do the other, and he hasn't. So th that's been the troubling part of his term before this accident. Because his re-election was in uh, November of 2014, and uh, uh, the senator uh, went through an entire legislative term where we, we understand he did vote regularly. He shows up as voting, but uh, uh, his committee attendance was very poor. David looked into that, and uh, we did not get one interview with the senator, despite our request, throughout an entire legislative session. Yet we kept receiving reassurances that you know the senator was aware of the policies he had to deal with and and uh, it was informed. Uh, all we've asked and and we're asking it again is uh, uh, you know that the senator will sit down with an interview. Now we know we have apparently has speech difficulties, but there's there's ways around that to you know, use. Uh, uh, we could type questions. Uh, excuse me. He could type answers to us. So, you know, there's ways to communicate beyond that. Now we know the senator is recovering from his accident. We understand that may take some take some time, but at some point, uh, you know, we strongly feel uh, you know, that he does need uh, to talk to the public, uh, you know, and through, through the media. Um, and, and you looked into that attendance record and how active it appeared to, he appeared to be as a state senator during the last term. Yes, and, you know, first of all, there's a little, there's a little um, kind of a problematic uh, element to his voting record because it's so down the party line um, when he was really a much more modern Democrat um, before the accident. So it's a little troubling, his voting record. But even more worrisome, I think, is that there's been no kind of disclosure and no um, um, frankness about his medical condition. There's been no, uh, he's entitled to privacy. Uh, the laws protect his medical records. But still, he's a public um, um, servant, a legislator. He's making public policy, public laws. Um, you know, he has an obligation, it seems to me, to make available some of his medical records, um, uh, uh, maybe allow some of his doctors to talk about his condition, to really sort of, um, you know, it's the kind of thing that an employer would do with his em employee, would do with his employer, um, to be really forthcoming and honest about his medical condition. And that's not happened. And, and it's even more troubling now that this accident has occurred. And it's unclear how the accident occurred. It certainly could have been related to his medical condition. Um, so I think he owes. Um, and he and the Senate Democrats owe a lot of explaining um, to, to the constituents uh, at this point. And the public also received assurances that uh, Senator Maynard had been cleared to drive. Uh, and we've asked for the release of whatever document or process that was that, that officially cleared him to drive. You know, was it a, a doctor's note? Was there some kind of testing? And, and again, we, at this point at least, we're, we're getting stonewalled on that. And then there's also the, the questions uh, surrounding sort of the unusual way, the way the, this accident uh, was first reported by police were, and by the uh, spokesman for the Senate Democrats. We were told it was a one-car accident on the first day. Uh, then, you know, then we learned there was a second car involved. Uh, subsequently, subsequently learned the car was driving the wrong way on Route 32, a divided highway. So. You know, there's issues of, you know, whether the senator was treated any differently uh, than any average citizen would have been who was in, involved in this accident. So it's, it's, a, it's a story that, uh, you know, we're going to continue to follow. Uh, there's a story today that uh, the Groton schools are looking for uh, increased uh, state support for a major school project. They need to try to better uh, racially mix and diversify their schools. And, and Senator, uh, certainly your state senator for Groton and Senator Maynard will be critical in fighting for those funds. So it just shows that, you know, you really do need your senator involved. And I think lastly, um, if you could talk about, um, you know, the issue of how the, the pension system is, 
uh, is uh, uh, played out, plays out for legislators in Connecticut and why that could be a factor in, in the importance of completing this term for the senator? Um, well, it's become, it was clear really from, from the first accident um, that he and his family were um, interested in his finishing out this term, which would um, um, put him over a 10-year mark, which would allow him to collect um, um, a lifetime of medical benefits and a very small pension because it's a part-time job. And uh, he would uh, begin to collect that likely um, when he was still pretty young. So it wouldn't be a big pension. But, um, you know, the, the takeaway, too, from all of this now that we t we're talking about that uh, more fully is really how many people have these kinds of benefits. I mean, it's a really extraordinarily generous system in the first place uh, for state workers and for these part-time uh, uh, legislators. So uh, it kind of brings to light that too. Although I think really even even putting that aside, the fact that it's probably a more generous system and benefits than the average uh, Connecticut worker would receive. Um, I think from the beginning um, here, the Republicans would have been glad to you know, pass a special act, give him his benefits, um, anything to kind of move the process along and, and have a healthier, um, more engaged senator for the people of Eastern Connecticut. And if that took a special act uh, to get him his benefits or uh, give him another job, um, a less crucial job than making laws, um, I think the Republicans were willing to do that. It seems that the Democrats weren't. Um, and they were glad to let him stay on and function in a way that he has, not attending committee meetings, um, voting down the party line. So these are things that are really um, coming into focus now as a result of this accident. And I think we're going to be looking at, uh, hope, hopefully, the um, lawmakers too will be looking at closely in the next couple of weeks. Now, I, you know, bottom line, we, you know, we certainly hope Senator Maynard uh, a, a great recovery. And we'd love if he sat down with us to find out he's on top of the issues, that he, he's uh, you know, he, he knows what's going on. He's ready to represent the, the people of his district, his large district in Hartford. That would be, I think, great news for everyone. But, uh, you know, at some point, as he recovers, the silence has to stop. Uh, you know, that's our editorial position, and the day will continue to aggressively pursue that story uh, as it unfolds.